Kaboom! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the AIB Show. This is Amit. And Dominic. Uh, we're back. Amit's a little tired and groggy this morning, so bear with me. And, but uh, And grumpy. Well, yeah, because of the tired and groggy part, it was some technical difficulties to start off and Dominic's known tardiness. And there's a com- combination of food flavors today. Mm-hmm. Somebody, didn't me, te- check- somebody did not test their mic, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Bo- boxing into a corner <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I can hear my own damn mic do this on you. Uh, of course you can. You can you can do it well, recording, I can't. listen I- to it. Yeah. Oh, really? We're doing all this now. All right. Yeah, the guy who can't even be on time and turn yeah. the computer on. You want fraud, me to turn on the computer, wifi. record stuff, do whatever your else? Fraud Wi Fi. You're coming in blurry. My fraud Wi Fi? Yeah. Dog, you're the one who lives in an aviary and you yeah. you live oh, like directly under the plane. On and I was on me. I'm, I'm clear. You're not. I'm watching on, on the StreamYard. So I'm clear. You're not. Yeah, because because you're you're using up your bandwidth. Mm-hmm. I see Eddie watching live. Eddie, what up? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's no, go. No, on. Don't, don't try to hit me with your nerd talk there, Elon. What bandwidth? That's <laughs> nerd talk. Wow, man. This guy. This guy. I don't overwhelm you with these with these words, son. All right. All right so a mitt was uh watched White Hot on Netflix. Uh mm-hmm. I still haven't watched it yet, but I figure he can talk about it. Hold up, are you serious? Yeah. You're joking, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to trigger you. I was like, Bridgerton, like, you want a box, dog? Uh, you got to be kidding me, son. I was um, about to hang up on you directly. I'm like, yo, this is done. <laughs> Moving on. All right, start off. No, what were you, what were you as, a, as, as a non-employee of anything, really? I don't think you had a regular job. Have you had a regular job in your life? I mean, minus your job now, but that's not, it's still not regular. Like a, like, a, like a job where you have to be at a place at a certain time and do a particular task? We talked about this in college. Yeah, my college job. Which college job? Where it was it was um summer job and they said you had to be there from Yeah, but you didn't that's what I'm saying. So you didn't do that because you they said for those don't know that, that was also that, that was that was your campus job, right? Yeah, you had to be there from nine to five and I went for the interview yeah. and I said, you know, I mean five days a week and I said, Well, here's the thing. Thursdays during college is kind of a going out night, right? Um, did you even really go out on hard... Thursdays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. You I were just going never out went to. I... Oh, every Thursday, I just never went to that grunge. I wouldn't set my foot in there that everybody went to. Tavern. I went to yeah. the sandbar and all those other places. The place seemed too nasty, but I was like, you know, Thursday you go out. It's kind of hard to work on a Thursday if you're going out. You got to, you know, it's pregame, relax. Um, and then after going out on Thursday, it's kind of hard to work and wake up and work, you know, going on a Friday. And then, and then, um, you know, Dre and Mookie, our friends, were going to the gym at 2.30 in Kendall. And I wanted to work out. So I said, can't really work till 5. Between the three, I want to go to the gym, gym by the way. Between yeah, the and then I said, I also, live, I also live in Kendall. Traffic is kind of hard. I'd have to wake up really early to get there at 9. So, but also these that gym crew of these three people, I don't know who's getting fit in this particular group. <laughs> I don't know what's this is the blind leading the blind all over the place. Like legitimately, for those of you so, obviously many of you don't know what these people look like. Just imagine Dominic's of dip, different pigment and height. That's what it is. This uh, interviewer was really taken aback because you know to summarize everything. Is summarize a word? Summarize. Summarize. So, yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? You yeah, just leave out a whole syllable? Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it sounded off. Freaking. I mean, to surmise is a word, but it's not used there in that particular context. To, to, to summarize, I said, oh, basically, I want to work 10 to 2 Monday through Wednesday. And the guy's like, are you, are you serious? The job is 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. I, said, I know, but I'm just telling you. I got it. So, yeah. You didn't get it. <laughs> that was the no, thing. I got it. 10 to, 10 to 2 Monday, Wednesday. Uh, so, anyway, Puff worked at... Abercrombie, you were the shirtless guy in the front of the store. Uh, not not on a daily basis, but I was from period from time to time. Were you stock room and also just sales floor. Uh, I was never stock room. Actually, no. We had to wait to fold. Berta was there too. I think we had to fold every now and we had to go to stock room every now and then. But that wasn't my standard. Like I was normally your gig is to just fold clothes in the front and then and or work the cash register and you know that was it. Like you just always fold. Like everything had to be in a certain order. Like you just have to fold everything. And make sure things right. look presentable. That all right, so for those that store. aren't familiar, 
with, Abercrombie? I mean, it's different now. So maybe some people only know the net, the current version. Okay. Not 20 plus years ago, right? Have you 20, been to an Abercrombie? Like Have in I? the past? Yeah, no, in the past, like whatever, five years? I didn't even realize it was still around. So no. So Okay. Neither did I. I had no <laughs> idea this company still existed until watching this documentary. Are they still in malls? I don't really go to malls much. And when I do, I don't, it doesn't catch uh, my eyes. So. Again, the documentary told me you're still around. I had no idea. And it may be, but obviously it's not the same valuation as it once was. And uh, the target audience is different. All right, Eddie said it is still around. So, all right, so they exist apparently. Um, I only but, went yeah. to them once or twice in my life because, A, shirtless dudes in the front of the store not really drawing me in to the store. Number two, the smell, the noxious smell of the cologne. You could smell outside the store. Yeah, it was I, a lot of, there was a lot of the cologne I mean, it, was, for sure. it was strong. And you go in the store and it's woo. And then the, the clothing wasn't what I would rock. So it wasn't really for me. Um, you wouldn't rock that clothing? I never, I've never owned an article of Abercrombie clothes in my life. Huh. I've owned, obviously, quite a bit. But also, you, uh, yeah, you had did. to wear it. No, I had to wear the clothes, too. Like, you can't not no, wear but you the clothes. Rocked. The Back then, that was just that. You would have rocked that. Yeah, I couldn't afford it, which is why I went to work for the store. Yeah. That was a game. That was a workaround. I was like, all right, if I can't afford it, I'm going to work at the store and then get what I want, you know, get it that way. Although it's still expensive, even with the discount. Right? Like you had to get like one, I think you got like one shorts and two t-shirts, something like that, like really cheap. And the rest were like a different price. I'm trying to, again, I'm going back. Like this is 1999, eight, nine, something like that. Like that's the year this was going down. This was a long um, time ago. Those of you watching live or on the video on YouTube later on, Amit is rocking a shirt by one of our sponsors, Shady Island in the shade. Sunglasses inspired in Jamaica. He's rocking the new logo. Yeah, well, I, got, I got Island. both. And I got this on there as well. Yeah. Paco's still waiting for a t-shirt. At Shady. Since Island, 1995. Um, but yes, yeah, so, okay. So for those of you who don't know. Sunglasses. Just, yeah, it's debatable, but no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but they're they're available on Amazon every which way as well. We are great folks. Okay, like so this. so Abercrombie yes. and Fitch. So a what's very, your, yeah, what's your I mean, thoughts? I I I I looked at it as a as a very more so than white, more I wouldn't say white because I saw people of color rocking it too, not as much as white people, obviously. More so the the fraternity kind of culture, market. Yeah, yeah, market. That's what and yeah. that wasn't me, right? Gotcha. I know I remember you you rushed, but you didn't pledge. Is that the term? I honestly don't know the terms. I think you rushed. Yeah. No, I didn't do one any of them. Of this chose stuff. you, and then you said no, or or yeah, I didn't do any. I didn't do any of this stuff. I, uh, I again, I don't. I didn't do anything that warranted actual effort. <laughs> Put it that way. Being like, yo, well, no, you want to so part? I wasn't in that crew. I had that culture, those clothes. It just didn't appeal to me. So I didn't know much about it. But this documentary schooled me to a lot. Um, you know, the real Twitter summary is they wanted to market to a particular demographic. Um, good looking white people and nothing else. And yep. actually, let me rephrase that. They're marketing, they wanted to portray good looking white people. They wanted everybody to wear it, to strive to be what they quoted, what they considered the all American look, which is good looking white people. Um, no non good looking people, no colored people. I mean, the handbook specifically said no dreadlocks, no chains, um, neat. Proper hair, white straight hair, things of that nature. Um, yeah, go on. You had, you had a lot of notes. No, just say no. no. I'm, 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 oh, and what's interesting too on how they shifted, how they created culture. There was no social media, right? The mall was the de facto kind of social media where you get your influence and everything. That was the hangout spot for, you know, people, a generation of kids. Yeah, like that's where everything was. No, I think um, the company was smart. I think they marketed. I think the company was. They had a great marketing strategy, and it worked. They, they utilized the what mall, they which wanted became, to achieve. Yeah, it became like the search engine for 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 cool and fashion. The mall. That's how you went and saw. So you saw the buzz around people going in and out of that store. They purposely blocked off the windows. Did the opposite of what marketing tells you to do to activate yep. your windows to see engages. They made it kind of more exclusive. What's going on in there? Blasting music. It seemed dark from the outside. I think it was dark, yeah. right? Inside? No, Hollister was dark when Hollister, because okay. Hollister came about afterwards, as did American Eagle. Um, but Abercrombie wasn't dark. Uh, I mean, the, the, the color, it was white, 
with the coloring, everything was like dark wood was the colorings, but it wasn't like a dark store from my, from my recollection. Um, yeah. and, and then consider some natural American and classic, but natural had to be white. Yeah. Um, so listen, my whole thing is you want to cater to your whatever demographic, fine, whatever, screw you. I, I don't, I don't want your clothes anyway, but I think that circumvented, uh, laws, actual Right, it's kind yeah. of the issue. No, but that happens. The hiring with like, practices, not the marketing. The hiring practices. Correct, but a lot of that yeah. too was like how you how you categorize employees. Do you categorize them as employees, or do you categorize them as models? Like, how do you play this game? And this, by the way, happens not just in Abercrombie, but this happens at go to Club X or you know certain restaurant Y. It's the same thing. It's like there are servers and there are models, right? And the reason they do that is because models have to have a certain look, et cetera, et cetera, and servers don't or can't right you can't discriminate on that right so there's always ways to circumvent the rules the dynamic here was they're circumventing the rules for a while but and it was fine so what i find a lot of the stuff to be interesting is <clears throat> when you watch a documentary there are many people who are blatantly aware of the innate racism associated with the hiring practices the hours etc 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 i'll get into more of the details but nobody said anything until their particular times went down, which goes back to my old situation that we're all generally selfish, right? Like nobody filed anything. Of, there's no lawsuit. There's no class action. Nobody joined anything. Nobody did anything. Everybody's very, very happy to be a member of this exclusive group, if you will, right? Independent of um, their particular cultural demo until they were not given the opportunity to be as Abercrombie as they wanted to be, right? Which is a weird thing. And then it was like, all right, lawsuit time, which I always find very interesting because again, I was yeah, but they, the but, dynamic. but notice some of them even said, we're not even sure this is like a lawsuit. Like they were brought on, kind of a thing. It's not as if there was only that one Asian individual who jumped on mm -hmm. when he was specifically learned that they didn't want any Filipinos in in the California store because naturally they were the the okay. But then again, you know, I would say if you look around the store, you blatantly know. You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of these no, things but that that's the store that had eye. a lot of no. That's the store that had them. So he 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 potentially wouldn't know because that's the one store that evidently had a lot of Asian workers. Then I a, think the upper management came in and said, "This is wrong. We don't want all these Asian." Oh, workers my bad. Here. You're right. You're so right. So he he has a job where he's looking around. And he thinks this is normal. He may not go to other Abercrombie stores. He may not realize top level management has an issue with this until they say. Bye bye, Asian workers. We want white workers. Yeah, you're right. I'm probably off on that then. It's weird because I'm looking at it and I'm like, so the whole dynamic with the store, right? The store was, as Dominic mentioned, you want to go after um, good looking, good looking white people. Um, the the bags, everything was done for this particular demo. Everything was done to be true, pure Americana. Everything was done to support this dynamic. So what they would do was, in the hiring practices, they would make sure that you looked a certain way. Uh, i.e. you represented their clothes. You were, you know, what they wanted to be, meaning you wanted to be, you wanted to go back, as I mentioned, to be the social media, to go back to your peers and wear the clothes and by therefore you could drive additional, you know, buzz about the store. Then it came to the point where they would hire other people as well, but those people would stay, uh, people who didn't fit that mold would be relegated to the stock room. So they'd be Abercrombie employees, but they'd be sitting in the stock room, right? And they would have to do everything that you would do in a stock room. You're in the back, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're unpacking the boxes, doing all that stuff, so on and so forth, right? Um, and this was a dynamic. And the stores weren't gauged, were sorry, weren't um, rated or ranked based on sales numbers, things of that nature. Um, but they would do pop and visits, they being management, to just make sure the store looked a certain way. Right, like the clothes were folded a certain way. And we had like folding boards in the whole nine. So every, and if anybody been to an Abercrombie like today, you know everybody only talked about whether or not things were folded. That was a whole job was to fold stuff and put stuff away in that whole nine. That was just it, right? And if you sometimes then eventually you got to work the cash register and stuff like that. You weren't supposed to help people either unless they asked for it. They were kind of doing their thing. You were doing your thing, and that was it. It had a whole different sales strategy that worked for it for a long time, a very long time. Right. And then uh, then they got sued because of their hiring practices and for doing exactly what I'm mentioning, putting people who didn't fit their mold of attractive in the back, not hiring other people who didn't fit their mold of attractive, period. 
and the people who they felt were uh, attractive enough got varying positions um, with on the floor, uh, meaning whether the front of the store, or back of the store, so on and so forth, or cashier or cash register, whatever it may be, right? All these things were predicated or relegated. Everything was predicated based on your appearance. And it was huge. I mean, it had a buzz for a long time. The store or the the you mean the, the company, the, 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 the brand, brand, the brand was the brand. Huge. oh, it went from like twenty five million, hundred yeah. million, four hundred million, seven hundred million, a billion year after year after year after year. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't realize how big it was. Um, I knew it was it was popular at UM with yeah. that certain demographic. You know? And then the Northeast, it was huge. Not obviously, it was huge in the Northeast, right? They even had, and I, and I knew this then, but I forgot to in the documentary, you couldn't even have, there were no black, not people, color of clothing in the store. Like there was nothing was black in the store. And it was weird too, because I don't know if you remember, I didn't own anything black. And I didn't really, uh, maybe this was part of it too, innately. By default, I didn't own anything. I didn't have black pants, right? I didn't own anything black by default. I didn't realize, and it's odd that I'm wearing a black t-shirt right now, but um the store had there was zero black in the store too. Like they, again, they had some weird rules that were that were driven by you know the the. I mean, I guess you can call it genius because the marketing was great around this product. Um, you know, and they had all these weird rules that supported that. You know, the way things fit, the the the, the way things looked, and so on. So much so that it garnered additional um, brands that literally just mocked this, copied it. Hollister and American Eagle came up after the fact and literally just copied whatever we'll try to copy what Abercrombie did plain and simple I mean it wasn't even like I mean they didn't even try to do anything they, they, and I bought American Eagle stuff after the fact too primarily because of cost um actually and so fit well too but it was a cost dynamic that drove me from one to the other because it wasn't there yeah listen we, we could debate if the brand was more inclusive would it have blown up as much potentially not I don't think so right um the there, there's two things though. The, the issues are you could have your marketing, such as those. I think there was a quarterly magazine that went out, and other things, and the imagery could have been, um, stayed white, while your employees not. But also twofold. That was more commonplace back then across all sectors, not just clothing right or wrong that's that is what it is and then they hired after this lawsuit and they were given an injunction to do certain things but there were no penalties if they didn't do it they hired a black was a chief diversity officer yeah who was saying yeah well we have more employees of color but you look from the executive level managerial level and everything top it, it still was all white um and eventually as the world changed you know, wokeness, things of that nature, the backlash, they couldn't handle the backlash. The main guy had to resign, by the way, on, on Facebook Live, Eddie. Mm. The lag is real with Amit. I feel like I'm watching an old kung fu, kung fu flick. Man, you're going to make the jokes eight right, damn it. You can't trip over yourself. Yeah. And you just lag when you said that. And I said kung flu like Trump. <laughs> See? Yeah, I don't you know what's know going on my computer, but that's weird. Yeah. Good. I don't know what's going yeah. on the computer. Well, hopefully the sound comes out okay at least. It should. It should. We shall find out. Um, but yeah, so you look at the store and so everything about it, right? So um, the guy running it was a closeted gay man. The major photographer was a non-closeted gay man. And there were many, many, many allegations of abuse. Take that back. From the photographer. Misconducts. Yeah, from the from photographer. From the photographer, not yes. from the No, no, not from the owner. You're right. Yeah. On sexual misconduct, not abuse, sorry, as related to this. And Abercrombie only got into hot water, I feel, because they didn't find a middle ground. Meaning exclusivity is key. You have to have, a, not have to, but exclusivity and stuff like this is what drives the success of the brand, period. And that's in all of it. Brands, like any major brand you can mention. or any, Exclusive, that, they, that didn't, they didn't make big clothes either. I mean, oh, no, size-wise, yes. Size Again, wise. exclusivity. Right. They did things that were just there. Right. They did things, sorry, they did things that they wanted to do and they made the market work. Right. Apple, same dynamic. Apple has certain exclusivity based on what they do, the way they give you what they want to give you when they're ready to give it to you. Right. People go, oh, Samsung, you can do copy paste since God knows when, when the first, when the first, uh, whatever Android phone came out. And it didn't matter because Apple still had a corner on the market because Apple had exclusivity. 
right? So when you make things overly inclusive, and I get the, the, the value proposition there. So one of the arguments that they're making in the documentary was, had they made it over the, overly, had they made it all inclusive, they would have tapped into a significantly larger size of the market. And I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. And I don't think you want to tap into the entire market. Like, that's not the way the game works. If that was the case, you know, Gucci, et cetera, would, would drop prices to be more inclusive. That's not the way the game works. So I think that that argument was flawed, is flawed. And case in point, I feel that now that it is an actual product, is it, sorry, is an actual store that's out there apparently. And and the, and the fact that we didn't even know it, so that it even existed still is proof point. That no, we can't compare it. This is 20 something years later. It, they, no, they but hold on, but American Eagle is still there. I knew that store was still around. I didn't know that store was still around. <laughs> but, but I mean, but, it's, also, it's, but American Eagle also didn't go through this downward trajectory, right? I think it's. Yeah, but, it's, but American Eagle yeah, never I think had a it's spike possible, either. But you can't, you can't, it could have grown, they could have marketed to, it didn't appeal to me. And there are many people like me. So what if they had appealed to me and to you? It could have been potentially big. But I don't think there's right. there's stuff that you bought that I didn't that didn't appeal to me and I wouldn't have worn either. My point is right. we can't there the, the value proposition of being all, everything to every person, I don't think is I don't think is good because I don't think that works. There are take that back. There are a couple yeah. of things that do this in general, but if you're trying to create a brand, it will never appeal to everybody. A general brand. Right? And I don't know if there's a significant value in being the everything to everybody scenario, right? Even in general stuff, right? If you're selling a home, right? Your clientele, like in the real estate game, your your clientele is predicated on what and what would drive certain. Like you're not selling, you know, the hundred thousand dollar house and the one million dollar house. You're going, no, I don't want that. I want what's here. You pick one or the other. But you see, you they reverse engineered it. They one time, and many brands will say, you know what, we we are going to appeal to this demographic, and naturally, other demographics are going to be drawn. Whether it's age, whether it's race, whether it's religion, whether it's, you know, geography, whatever it is, what they did was the opposite. They said, only you people come to us. Yeah. So that that's different. So that lessens the bucket. If I say I'm going to appeal to the college age white crowd, that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to market towards, yeah. right? Naturally, you're going to get some other people coming in. You just efforts. And that's like free by, by, by default. You're not purposely going after them. Where you're going to get the opposite was, I don't want any of you. I only want you to come to me. So it purposely boxed out others. Yes. Right. But I'm saying, I, but I'm but saying that was the intent. It's I don't not like the supreme thing. effect where it kind of creates that. It's. So, okay. Supreme doesn't want certain people. I .e. Correct. Lose, right. But they're not boxing them out. They know those people can come. They don't. Here's a, It's not that they don't want. They don't care if they don't get them. Yeah. And that makes it even more exclusive and bigger. It's like, yeah, it's like the, at the club. It's like, all right, if, if we get you, we get you. It really doesn't bother us if we don't get you. Yeah. Abercrombie was, F you, I don't want you. No, but it's not F you, I don't want you because it's also, no, it just it said, you, I don't no, want you. it you... said, no, it said, I'm going to make things for people that I want to make things for. If I'm a club, I'm going to play music that I want to play for people who like this kind of music. I'm not playing music for everybody. Maybe I have a hip hop night today. Maybe something else right there. And by default, I'm segmenting my audience. So I'm not doing things for all people and everybody, right? I'm literally going, I want this particular demo, period. Right. Right. I don't, uh, I, no. but they also Agreed. didn't want another demo. I don't want another. No, but okay, the no, playbook you. says you can't look, the, the handbook, you can't look like this. If you didn't care, if you got them additional revenue, you don't mm -hmm. do that. They said, we don't want somebody who looks like this. True, so but I'm saying to you that's what I just that, said. no, no, I'm I'm not saying, knocking you. But I'm saying to you is what's the value? Why? Okay, but based on the ways, based on the successes of companies who have done this, right? Well, from outside the, of listen, outside from the, the, from the marketing aspect, from the marketing <laughs> aspect, you, yeah, from the marketing aspect. I, listen, I think if, good. If, if you say screw me or you don't want me, I say okay, screw you. I don't care. I don't want your stupid clothing. It's it comes down to the hiring. That's that's. No, that's what I'm saying, right? Outside yeah. of the blatant racism, I think the marketing strategy was actually very, very sound because they didn't want to be everything all people. And by doing so, they could charge what they wanted to charge and get that audience but and be to, quote, unquote, exclusive. Shopped, according to the, the documentary, it, was, it wasn't expensive. Who said that? I bought your, They actually said that. The, the people were talking. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Nah, man, you're dropping like, like, like 30 some dollars for a t-shirt when I'm in college making no Back money. In, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's I'm not the way the documentary made it, made it made no, it. Seem. Then it was not cheap. 
Hmm. It was definitely not cheap, right? Like even the shorts and stuff. Yeah, you're looking at $50 shorts like that. For, I mean, wow. that's what you'd wear them things regular. I don't remember it being cheap, um, hmm. not in cost or anything else, right? And that was the dynamic there, right? But again, they're exclusive and exclusive drove interest, exclusive drove revenue, exclusive drove everything. Now, again, they're blatantly racist in their dynamics and that's the part that I'm not supporting. But I also don't feel like I, the only thing I'm talking about specifically in relation to that is uh, one of the people interviewed at the very, very end of it was, uh, you know, um, was a black woman who was stating some to the effect of they are now more more inclusive and therefore not more, more inclusive by way of um, not just hiring practice. That's key. But I mean, like the actual product and they're trying to be more to more people. And I don't see the value there. Like to me, I think that diminishes the brand. Right. Because now you're saying now this might as well. This is anything now. Right. So in that situation, it was I was like, I don't get it. Like, I don't know why you, you would like the idea that this makes it a more viable company with greater market share, which is true. I mean, not great, greater market presence, which is true. Uh, I don't think this and I mean, based on the value of the product and the fact that you know the product even exists anymore proves that that's not what you want to do in all cases, especially with clothing. Right, because the whole idea of clothing is you are identifying with something. Some clothes are for some people, some clothes are for other people. But the hiring practices were aggressive. And also they went, we mentioned t-shirts. So they had a bunch of slogan tees. That's what also blew them up for a while before anybody else had slogan tees. Oh, but some some kind of racist tees. Yes, yes. And the work around that, by the way, which is still the work around to this day. <laughs> I think I know where you're going. <laughs> go, go. No, you just have to have an Asian person in the room or a black <laughs> person in the room, and you can it's say whatever you want. Fine. <laughs> yeah, and it goes, it went by somebody that said it was good to go. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, that's they not saying they they were, uh, yeah. Racist Asian t-shirts, and evidently, mm -hmm. one of the people who approved it internally was Asian. So they said, Correct. this guy approved it. It's got to be fine. No, no, but okay. But what I will also say though is I feel that the I feel that the the audience was um I feel like the times matter. Like I think that was a different time where people weren't sensitive is not the right word, people weren't as aware of the the innate racism or blatant racism associated no, with certain I, things. I, I diff I you know, times matter. I kind of like I thought I got no, it was just more it it was more Except we don't care and that's it's my point. it's no, but you said aware. There's a difference between care and well, aware. Well, okay, no. Um, because, no, what it is is, what it is is the dominant throughout history, whether it's men, whether it's white, whether it's straight, it's the dominant presence throughout history coming down and the mind frame and the ideology. So straight white male, um, you know, because remember, this wasn't marketed towards gays, just internally some people happen to be gay in some of the models. Mm -hmm. but that wasn't the imagery going on because you'd always have Correct. the men and the women in the, in the imagery. Correct. So straight white male thinking is, oh, making fun of the Mexican or they actually didn't seem to, at least in the document, have any black racist shirts. It was more uh, Mexican and Asian. So mm -hmm. making fun of them in traditional stereotypes, that's just the way it is. It's normal. We've always done that. Correct. Um, oh, well, you know, there's a few objections. Oh, well, this one Asian guy says it's fine as if all Asians are a monolith. You know, um, today's did you know? But then I will say, how many Asian guys make it okay? Asian people. What do you mean? If these people feel this is correct. There's probably more than one. No, no. I'm yeah. saying these people feel it's correct. Right? Back well, then. one person. Feel, felt it, the white people feel it's correct or the one Asian? Yeah, no. The white people it. feel it's okay. Yeah. Right? I think, oh, this is funny. And they go, who else? Who am I going to ask if this was funny or not or appropriate enough? And I got one Asian guy, because I don't really hire many of them, but I got the one. And he or she says, yeah, that's funny. Right? Now I'm supposed to put it out to the masses to see if everybody thinks it's no, funny. No, you could hire. Out there. You could, what, what's the thing where you put twenty people in a room? My mind's uh, I, I do, uh, oh, um, I know what you're talking about. I'll come back to me in a second. Uh, yeah, hold up. Get, yeah, but you're, uh, yeah, but you're not gonna do that with 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 every every slogan. You get ten yeah. Asian employees in a store from three stores in California. Ask them. Are they yeah, Asian but who says? Asian? Okay, but why is why is ten why is ten better than is ten the right number then? May not be, but it's better than one. Two is better than one. Three is better than one. All right. Yeah. Right. Um, you were saying something. I cut you off. You were saying today's. Did uh, you know today's? Yeah. Asians? Uh, I think it's like one in every four Asians in New York is actually lives below the poverty line. The most impoverished race in New York City. Many people don't realize that. Now you may is that think black. On, is maybe that, think it's black or Hispanic. It's Asian. Is that based on population size? No. Percentage-wise. Hmm. Did I know that? Would not have known that. 
Yeah. Sad. Um, yeah, also that. very sad. Did you see the shooting in Oklahoma that came out last week of a shooting from December? Kwaji Sanders? Nope. Uh, black guy. The officers have already been charged with manslaughter. He got shot 12 times and killed. He was evidently there was like a, I don't know if it was an order. He shouldn't be at someone's house. Right. Mm -hmm. And the police called him or the police were called. They got on the bullhorn, told him to come outside. He comes out outside, but hides behind a fridge. And as he comes around the outdoor fridge, as he comes around the fridge, he gets popped four times. Right. They say hands up. He was unarmed, gets popped four times, falls on the floor. They say hands up, hands up. He lifts his hands up again. Shoot him eight more times. Kill him. It's horrific. So, 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 um, so horrific that in a few days after the video came out, they just charged, they, uh, the DA charged him, or I think they were ready to charge. Anyway, the officers have been charged with manslaughter. When did this happen? It evidently happened in December, but the video came out last week. See, so yeah, there's nothing that bothers me, right? So, until the video, until there's public outcry or public, until this you one, can't no, cover I could, up. yeah, usually, I think this one, they said they're going to do their investigation. Mm -hmm. And we will release the video. I think they wanted to come to a conclusion before, I could be wrong, before public sentiment justifying it or admonishing it. So what may have happened was, what may have, <laughs> what may have happened is once they made their decision, that's when they decided to release it. I could be wrong. I think that's what happened. Um, it's where the police union comes into play. Yeah. Right? Because this is where that comes into play significantly. Right. And we've got a lot of unionization going on in a lot of companies right now. Um, and I'm, 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 you know, there's, there's value to it in many, many, many cases. And then there's also things like this, well, like everything else, there's always a pro and a con. Um, and I think some of these unions are very, very, very strong. And I mean, here, here's hurts. my, here's my thing with, with the police. I, yeah. Unions too, even though, um, this is a fascinating podcast. You listen to one about how, uh, Amazon worker was able to unionize. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty wild. But hold up, but now, but now the next step kicks in where now they've got to actually negotiate an agreement. This is oh. where it gets really interesting, right? Getting, getting the votes is, by the way, difficult as hell. Give the dude crazy props, right? Because it was like literally one dude making this happen in Staten Island, right? Um, Standing on like a corner with a sign. Yeah, which is dope. <laughs> but now negotiating the agreement, this is where game, this is where it changes now. Because now you're going up with lawyers against lawyers against lawyers. Right. Yeah. This is where things become really difficult. So I'm curious to see what this comes out as being meaning. Is it actually be better or worse than what they currently have? Right. Like they may get some breaks or whatever, but they're going to get the dollars. They're going to get what they're actually looking for, because now what's happening with unions is they're unionizing independent stores versus unionizing as an entire labor force, which I think also causes additional conflict because you can't move from one to the other and expect to get the same things. So if I live in Staten Island and moving to Jersey or moving to wherever and try to go to a different store that doesn't have a union. I don't know how that works either. Oh, yeah, interesting. Right? Because Starbucks is doing the same thing. They're unionizing specific stores, right? And this is what changes the game a little bit because I don't know how this works when you want to be, when you want to transition. I just don't know the dynamic here. Well, I'm speaking, of, here. speaking of, there, you know, AOC got a ton of credit and also backlash for supposedly, kill, for depending which side you're on, for killing that LIC, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Amazon in Long Island City. Yeah. When really, if you dig deeper, it, it wasn't her. She was just in the, the media. It was the union. The union killed it. Yeah, because yeah, because they wanted. I think Amazon it was, it was, wouldn't do it, and the union workers, the the, the people, there's some mm -hmm. union in the area or something mm -hmm. representing. I don't know what. They were the ones who were like, no, you're not coming into this town and doing this in our town. I mean, there were probably some kind of, you know, mafia type things on the back end. Always. You know, they're like, this no, is the game, know. right? This is what it comes yeah. down to. So, but that same thing translates to the police union you're just talking about, right? My point is when you're talking about these six X number of months to come out and whatever else, these things are all obviously, you know, um, uh, considered, negotiated, arbitrated, et cetera, as part of the agreements of what can and, and can't come out and when and, and how things have to be treated and so on and so forth. But it relates to the, uh, the offender in this case, the police, but never to the offended, Right, because the individual is never unionized, right? So the individual's name can't will come out immediately. Uh, the officer's name can be quiet really? for months and months and months, yeah. right? These are things that are this double edged sword, not double edged sword, this double standard is, uh, yeah, it, this is where the frustration lies with all these but things. But here's a double standard you know, we tell the mind frame of, of somebody who's either under arrest or being interrogated or and calm down, don't freak out, don't run, don't. 
yeah. do whatever. Listen, don't do, reserve. Don't but the police don't do that. Your, yeah, go against the police. All don't your, do that. All your all your natural, natural instinctive inter- emotions. Just, yeah, just don't move. Don't do that. Yeah. So the citizens have to do that, but the police can't. The We're police don't. Do, the guy turns a corner. They think he has a gun. Shoot him twelve times. We're not unionized. Unarmed. He didn't have his head. He didn't draw for something. He didn't make a crazy move, right? So you expect somebody who's looking down a gun barrel to act calm mm-hmm. when the people who have the guns and the the they're that are terrorizing the citizens are not calm. It's wild. This is wild. Well, it's not wild. This, this is the world we live in, man. This has always been the case. Like this has literally always been the case in history. Right? For ever, never, 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 never. You know? On a here's, side note. Here's a weird thing through history. Um, yeah. another did you know? Did you know that South Korean aging system is completely different than the rest of the world? One more time. What's this? Aging? A- yeah, age. When you're born, there's two actual okay. When we're when we're bo- born, 12 mm-hmm. months later. Mm-hmm. On the anniversary okay. of our birthday, we turn one. Correct. The world. South yes. Korea has two aging systems. Okay. The major, the main one is when they're born, they're born at one. And come January 1st, they turn two. So if you're born December 31st, on January 1st, you're two years old. The less whoa, whoa, common. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> one more Hold up. One, I'm, if you're I'm, whoa, born one on time. December 31st. December you, 31st. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You're born December 22nd? Yes. So you're one at December 22nd. Come January yes. 1st, you're two years old. So it just goes calendar year? Yeah. Mind you, in the rest of the world, <laughs> you'd just be a little over a week old. <laughs> oh, the power does that work? Two years. Now, the, they have another system, which is confusing for South Koreans, because most people abide by the system I just mentioned. Other people have it a little more to the rest of the world where you're born at zero. Like we all are, mm-hmm. but come January first, you're one. So again, instead of being two in the popular system in South Korea, you born December twenty second would be one come January first. So why even have an aging diet? I don't understand. Like, what the hell? What's the purpose what? of this? What's the purpose of this aging situation? Because everybody turns. I thought you said Asian. Oh. <laughs> this guy, man, aging, aging. This guy. Uh, that's just the way. They, so there's a new president elect who's trying to change it because he says it's very confusing. Um, when you're, I'm trying to send the, the original logic is what the rest I'm of the world, get. but also confusing internally because being with your peers where you're putting people in grades and work environments and they can be up to a year and a half, two years apart though. They're the same age yeah, I don't in get terms this. of days on alive. I'm trying, I'm trying to understand the logic behind, like, why would you do this is what I don't understand. Like, I mean, why, what was the Genesis of the idea? And they go, you know what? This is the way to go about doing it. Tradition. That's just the way it's been. Why is my question? Why is my question? All right, what do you got? Oh well, no, no, I'm. Uh, well, I'm gonna finish this off, but and we'll pick this up another episode. But so I was, I was, I was on the West Coast. I got back uh, a couple hours ago, as I mentioned. <clears throat> um, one of my friends uh, who I was out there with Ari brought up a. Um, we're out. We're out of this, dude. We're at this, 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 this place called the Madonna Inn, right? Bro, it's a hotel, but it's like stuck in like 19, God knows what year. Very, very, very funky looking. And then there was this, there were like, there was a party going on. For, it, was, it was like, I was, uh, it, I think it was a um, baby shower, but it was very, 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 it's so strange. People were dressed in like 70s garb or 60s garb, one of these garbs for the baby shower. And it was very awkward. And did I, I didn't, we didn't even know it was a baby shower. It just didn't make any sense. But what's interesting is, in the bathroom, which is apparently ranked one of the top 10 bathrooms in the world by like travel, whatever. Bruv, here's what, yeah. <laughs> Google, Google Madonna in right now, mail bathroom. What does that mean? Who's here's ranking why. bathrooms? It has a waterfall situation for the urinal. But when you're peeing, that's when the waterfall turns on. And when you're not peeing, it turns off. I wasn't about that life because I feel like there's going to be a lot of backsplash going on when you have a waterfall going on this dynamic. I'm looking at it. Yeah. And and uh, so we're leaving. Some of the ladies went in to go check it out. We're leaving. The place is closed, and it's obviously got a, it's it's a bathroom, so it's got a smell to it as well. I didn't find it as exciting as many people did. However, just crazy enough that that's a thing, and and it's got a ranking as I just mentioned. Don is looking at it right now. And Even weirder, weird. there's so there's no privacy. I got two dudes 
I'm looking at two dudes standing beside it. Yeah, it's got like a trough. It. It's like a trough. It's yeah, like that kind of vibe. Yeah. They're using it together. Yeah, it's a waterfall trough. We, uh, I didn't do that either. I'm just saying that's what it's there. I mean, again, but it's weird because the water turns on or doesn't turn on, right? Based on and you kind of walk in. Not even just you walk in it like on the floor. It's, where it's really, really strange. Yeah, and for gross those of you at home, you want to just Google this situation, right? Madonna but, in but, bath and gross looking. Yeah, it's it, it it's different for them. It's very different. It wasn't really my my cup of tea. Uh, it was different. Is the toilet private? Because when I'm seeing it's open. The toilet, yeah. Well, I went to the toilet. Yeah, yeah I went to the toilet. To, 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 the toilet's yeah. regular. Yeah. All so right. if ever you're in this area, which is around the the whole San Luis Obispo area uh, of California, uh, for some vino tasting, etc., this is in that vicinity. And in case we didn't mention, I think we did the Abercrombie name of the documentary. And where it is, it's White Hot on Netflix. Correct, White correct. White Hot on Netflix. Um, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to play a game next time we have this call. Don is going to name 10, 10, 10, his top 10 uh, female celebrities um, because we were Googling some of these things. Uh, again, Ari brought this up. We're Googling some of these things while we're at this particular place, Madonna Inn, which is what I was going back to say. And some of these, some of the feet on these people, ooh-wee, not appropriate at all for any kind of shoes. <laughs> Bruh, I didn't even know how it came up the first time. What kind we of were game is this? <laughs> it was rough, dude. Like, it was rough. It was so bad. Um, so I'm just saying, yeah, think of, don't, don't Google it ahead of time. You just got to think of your top 10, and then we're going to do it live, we're and we're going to show five? it. Five? Ten seems like a lot. You can't think of 10 women who you find attractive in general and assume <laughs> that the feet would match the person? That's assume not always the, the case. <laughs> not always the case. <laughs> oh, it's a yeah. virgin dynamic. Yes, didn't know this as well. It was just very – it was a, it was a, it was an eye-opener, to say the least. Caught me off guard completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So All right, be better, eat better. Um Scrub your feet. <laughs> Bruh. Justice over Uses. order. By the time you hear this, I no. Next next time I record, I'll have my knee surgery. So Oh damn, that's right. When are you getting surgery? Tomorrow. Oh snap. Yeah. Oh yeah, we went through this. It's not orthoscopic, right? Because you didn't know what that was. Correct. Okay, so you're out Slice for how long? Uh I think like an hour and a half. No, no, you're out. I don't literally mean out. Sorry. <laughs> how long are you in the hospital? <laughs> slash, how long is what's, what's no? The it's outpatient. Fear? I come back. I come home. You will day. come back tomorrow. Yes. Got you. Okay. Okay. No. This guy. How long you? Like I care how long you're actually. In All right. Justice of order. I got to eat better. Eat <laughs> take, better. <laughs> take it easy, everybody. Free the whales. What?